Hey everybody, it's me, Angela Walters. Welcome to my weekly live chat. I was just sitting here thinking about how much I look forward to these Thursday chats and I am so glad that you're joining me as well. Every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central, I get on here and talk for about a half an hour about something quilting related usually, and I answer your questions live. So if you're watching this live right now, Jessica is over here writing down your questions, so be sure to type them in the chat and I can address them at the end. But if you're not watching it live, no worries. I know real life gets in the way, like jobs and family and stuff, chores. So the video will stay out on my YouTube channel. Just leave a comment and from time to time I get back on there and answer them. And I also know that all of my live chat viewers are very helpful as well. So they'll be sure to pop in and answer your question as well. So hello from middle of Missouri or middle of the US in Kansas City, Missouri, just outside. It is a gorgeous spring day and I almost slightly considered canceling because it's so nice outside. But I want to talk to you guys about tips for quilting English paper pieced quilts. Um, I had planned on being up at Missouri Star for filming today, but it got moved to next week. So I'm hoping next week while I'm filming with Jenny, because you know I am only 45 minutes away from Missouri Star, I thought maybe next week's live chat can be a little bit like, hey, look what's going on behind the scenes. So if it still happens next week, that's what li live chat will be about next week. So I was scrambling trying to think, what am I going to talk about today? And I thought, you know what? I have English paper piecing on the mind because Tula Pink is going to be here June 18th for our quilt walk, our outdoor quilting show and tell. And she's going to be doing an English paper piecing demo. And when I first heard kind of what English paper piecing was and the technique, which involves handwork and cute little blocks, I thought there's no way I would ever be an English paper piecer. I mean, let's face it. I don't like binding. I used to hand quilt my quilts. That's not very fun to me. Um, I thought, no, oh, that's never going to be my thing until it was. So it turns out I love English paper piecing. I love being able to do it when I'm not by my long arm and especially on a road trip when I can get Jessica to help me out and we get the project done. And when it comes to quilting quilt tops that are English paper pieced, there isn't a whole lot of difference than quilting a regularly pieced quilt top, but I'm going to give you some tips for how to address those quilts. But if you're sitting here watching and thinking, there is no way ever that I will be an English paper piecer, well, just hold on, that's what I said. But these tips can also be applied to other quilts as well. So don't feel like you can't watch just because that's the case. So real quick, little like uh, show and tell, what is English paper piecing? Well, I'm, this is the blocks I'm working on right now. And English paper piecing is where you use templates to base your fabric on and then sew it together by hand. This is great for pieces that are difficult to sew on a sewing machine or to make more intricate looking patterns. Now, you might have no think English paper piecing. Normally, you would see templates that are paper, like this one, one I'm working on. But I'm using some different kind of templates. These are EpiFlex templates. So this is actually the kit I used for this rainbow block. They're actually plastic. Now, what's great about the plastic is you can reuse them. You can wash them. And Linda was on our live chat, or typing, type chat before I went live, and she said, oh, I'm just, what I'm kind of worried about starting because they're one-time use. Well, the EpiFlex plastic templates are not one-time use. You can use them over and over again. So this is a designer pack. It comes with all the little pieces. And I thought, you know, since it's such a beautiful day outside, I was going to do a giveaway. So if you're watching this anytime before next, Tuesday, next Thursday, leave a comment saying what you think about English paper piecing. And at my next live chat, I will pick a random winner to win that pack. Kind of fun, right? And next thing you know, you'll be addicted. So I've been working on my little, my little English paper piecing blocks using the Luminous fabric collection. I won't show you all of them, but we have a little English paper piecing group that meets once a month. It's so fun. But once it's all assembled, then you pull out the little pieces. So I've pulled out my um, plastic pieces and then I'll assemble it and make it into a quilt and then quilt it. So the great thing about quilting quilt tops that are English paper piecing, paper pieced, is usually we don't have any bulk at where those seams come up together. So I have a lot of points there, but it's almost like every little seam is pressed open. It, well, it actually is pressed open. So it makes quilting them a breeze. In fact, Jessica finished this. This uses those same EpiFlex templates. It's the milkshake pattern. By the way, the link in the description box will show you all these. And quilting it was a lot of fun. I quilted it for her. And so I thought, oh, this would be a great topic to kind of talk about. So we're going to talk about how to quilt it and things to take into consideration. And again, remember, if you have questions, leave them on there and I'll definitely answer them. Well, 
the reason, again, why it's on my mind is the Quilt Walk's coming up June 18th. I know I keep talking about this, but I'm super excited. It's here outside of our quilt shop. We're located in Liberty, Missouri, just outside of Kansas City. And you know, if you've watched this, we're only 30 minutes from the airport and only 45 minutes from Missouri Star. So if you're going to be in the area, I hope you'll stop by because for the first time ever, we're having a featured guest, Tula Pink. So she's gonna do an exhibit and a meet and greet. And I know that if you watch my live chats, you already know this, but just in case you don't. And one thing you might not know is Tula and I are really good friends. And so I have quilted most of her quilts for the last 12 years, almost 13. And I have a lot of fun meeting with her. In fact, she dropped off another quilt yesterday. And here you can see on her bed, we're wrapped up in her English paper pieced quilt. So quilting her quilts was really the first instance of me seeing English paper piece quilts and also working with them. And so I have kind of went through some of those older pictures to show you an assortment of ideas to give you suggestions on, on how to work through it. Now I've shown this before, but guys, I'm kind of proud of it. It's my first and really only English paper piece finish. And it just goes to show you those different shapes that you can get. If you're thinking this sounds intriguing, because I'm not going to get into how to actually English paper piece, check out the Midnight Quilter on my YouTube channel. I have a whole video where I show you how this comes together, and it gives you the basics of the English paper piecing technique. If you're thinking it's hard, though, let me tell you it is not. It really isn't, because you're just hand sewing straight lines, and then you have the whole pretty thing done. So that's my last little bit of encouragement there. So when I'm quilting these English paper piece quilts, you have to know that Tula is an amazing precise piecer. Her quilt tops are always pieced perfectly, they're always pressed perfectly, and her English paper piece quilts are no different. But this was like in progress. I just flipped over the quilt to take a picture of the back so you can see this is really kind of what the back of an English paper piece quilt would look like. Um, all the papers are removed and it's ready to be quilted. Now, the only thing I would say, the only thing to maybe take into consideration is you're going to have a little bit more bulk in general on the quilt. I mean, those were like one inch hexagons. And by the time you have all those seams folded over. So on a long arm, it's really no problem. Those industrial machines can go through anything. On a sewing machine, if you're finding that bulk, it's kind of difficult to get through. Pick out your quilting foot that's the dynamic one. It kind of hops as you go. It usually has like a plastic kind of ring around it. It's going to be a great option. And just make sure you put in a new needle. I love titanium top stitch needles because they're strong and they, they retain their, their sharpness for longer and you'll breeze through it like no problem. Okay, so the actual application of the quilting is not difficult. It's the same on any quilt. I mean, except you have the pressure of this thing that you've made that you hand pieced and it took probably, you know, 10 years. That, besides that, it's the same. So when we're looking at English paper pieced quilts, in general, usually I'm thinking small pieces, you know, kind of like those little little guys I was showing them. Those are little tiny pieces, but not always. This is from Tula's Monkey Wrench collection. This was actually a big example of big English paper piecing. Those blocks were, were fairly big. And so when working with bigger blocks, I just treat them like any other kind of block, right? Showing off the intricate piecing look of it, using quilting to draw attention to certain areas of the quilt, and just really having fun with it. But for those that have English paper piece before or are wanting to take it to the next level, you might hear about people talking about fussy cutting. I just, I love the name fussy cutting, by the way, because it's like not fussy as in I'm mad, but fussy as I'm particular about what I cut out. And Tula is a master at this. She fussy cuts everything, especially or even the little stripes that are in the points of her star. So if you take the time to fussy cut your fabrics, use that as inspiration for your quilting. So you can see here, she has the points that that's actually a stripe that's fussy cut, that pink. And then we have like the yellow. And I just used the fabric, the fussy cut that she had taken the time to do and highlighted by using the quilting to kind of connect those points. So not that you want to think about machine quilting all the time like I do, but as you're making your blocks or looking at your blocks, think about how you might like to quilt it. How can you use the quilting to show off the parts that take the longest? And fussy cutting, we're going to see a lot of examples of this today, um, but using that kind of as inspiration. And then in those bigger blocks, you can kind of see here, I've got that surrounding so pretty. And in the bigger centers, I went around the fabric for most of them. So you can see the little green on the side with the bananas going around the elements of the print because that's really important as well, her beautiful fabrics. But then even in the center of that light yellow one, the fabric was really too intricate, too much of a blender to go around. So I just did something nice and basic, nothing too crazy to take away from her beautiful, beautiful piecing.
So use the fussy cutting, use the fabric. Now, this was so fun because this is her Tula Pink Nova quilt. And this was a few years ago. Um, and it was for her All Stars fabric collection. And it just so happened in the very center of the quilt was this raccoon. And it had the solid diamonds around it. You can kind of see the yellow and the teal and the pink. And it just so happened there was enough diamonds that I could quilt out the letters All Stars around the center. That was such a happy accident, but when I figured that out, I was super excited. So again, using the inspiration of the quilt or some details to, to pull that out was so much fun. And it just so happened those diamonds were, you know, good size. They were a couple inches long, so I had plenty of space. And I think here you can see them a little bit closer. Um, so don't be afraid to use the inspiration behind the quilt. This could have been somebody's name. It could have been my name. Angela is awesome. I mean, that would be a lot of diamonds, but depending on the, the, uh, the inspiration behind the quilt. But I will say, as I'm working through these quilts, I kind of consider, I do consider, the return on my quilting investment. What does that mean? That means I'm not gonna do difficult, intricate stuff in areas that you can't see. If those diamonds had been a busier fabric, I'm not gonna take the time to mark out all stars and quilt dense back and forth lines to make it pop out because you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. So I'm saving those special quilting designs, that umph or that, you know, like that one area I wanna show off for areas that you can actually see it. Unless the one caveat to that is maybe you're practicing designs and you don't feel comfortable doing it over a whole quilt. Well then, busy fabrics are the perfect place to practice. Sometimes in, when I do classes, people will ask me if I still practice machine quilting. I absolutely do. I, pack, I practice on Tula's quilts in her busier fabrics. You can't see the quilting anyway, but maybe you don't tell her that. And then English paper piece quilts are sometimes pieced all the way to the edge, or sometimes it's a big piece appliqued onto a piece of fabric. So here, I don't have any flat shots of this quilt. I don't know what I was thinking, not taking any, but it was a big piece of fabric that she appliqued the center on. So in that background space, quilting a large feather, having fun with it, just, you know, having a good time. So it might not be tiny pieces everywhere. You might have these irregular areas as well. Stick with designs that you know that will fill, fill in those irregular areas and also designs that you feel comfortable quilting because it took you forever to put it together. It shouldn't take you forever to quilt it. Now, when it comes to picking out those shapes, so there's a lot of basic shapes that you'll see with English paper piecing, you know, hexagons, triangles, diamonds. Um, but when I'm looking at quilts that are pieced with different shapes, I'm gonna pick designs that are versatile and can be used in a lot of different ways on a lot of different shapes. Now, when I've done a live chat on sampler quilts, we've seen this, right? So even if you're like not into English paper piecing, chances are you're gonna make a quilt with more than one kind of block sometime in your quilting life. And so using those will help you with those, those shapes when you have multiple blocks on your quilt. So in the purple outside the striped star dot to dot quilting, you couldn't pick a better winner for English paper piecing. That geometric shape's just gonna help draw attention to the center, those kind of wedge triangle shapes, and it's just going to fit the space perfectly no matter what angle triangle you have. And you can even look on the white hexagons, or, or sorry, the white pentagons kind of together, make a little shape, again, more dot to dot quilting. Um, as I was pulling together pictures, I was like, dang, I'm just doing dot to dot quilting and continuous curve, but you know, for different examples and, and variations. Then, and those stars that have the fussy cut centers, you can see in the diamonds around it going with continuous curve. We had a whole live chat about that. I think it was last week. Um, again, another versatile way. So I'm not trying to do super difficult stuff. I'm picking a design that I can do in a lot of different ways. Now, when Tula's fussy cutting, she is so, again, I don't know how she does it. I've never actually witnessed it. I'm pretty sure she like voodoos it out and touches it and there you go, it's fussy cut. If the fabric is a focal point, which usually it is, especially for her quilts, they tend to be in the center of the block and they show off her, her brilliant designs. I mean, quilting along the details in the fabric is just a no-brainer. It, it's just an easy way to keep the quilting subtle in, in those areas to show off the fabric and also you know, keep it from overwhelming the print. I mean, I don't think any of my quilting could overwhelm her beautiful fabrics, but you know, if you have those quilts where the fabric is your favorite thing, quilting around some of the elements is gonna be a great way to do that. But don't feel like you have to go around every single thing. I, obviously, I'm not quilting around the teeny tiny dots in some of that area. I'm just going with the general idea, helping kind of give it that, that you know, that look that, that they put together. Now, if you kind of zoom out, you can see the continuous curve, the dot to dot, and the quilting around the fabric. So this is actually an in-progress photo. I snapped it when I was quilting it on my long arm. But it just shows you that when you think of a basic shape, like 
like a triangle or that V. That's pretty boring by itself. But usually, not all the time, but usually in English paper piece quilts, there's a secondary pattern. And we take that shape and when you rotate it around, it creates some different effects. So again, don't feel like it has to be overly ornate. Chances are you won't have room to fit that in there anyway. And the secondary pattern is where it's really gonna shine. So again, picking those designs that are nice and versatile. And I just threw this in here because I found it in the pictures and it's just a back, a photo of the back of the quilt. Um, just showing all the different designs and different textures playing around with it. All right, don't be afraid to throw in little secondary patterns or to really have fun with it. I know it can be intimidating, especially when all the pieces are small and you're stressed out about quilting it, I get it, um, but it's fun to create secondary designs or just keep it amusing. So towards the bottom of the picture, where those bigger blocks come together, you can see there's a little, a little like echoed in the hexagon and a couple echoing just to, just to kind of show where those come together. And again, those secondary patterns, lots of fun to put, put together. Usually with English paper piece quilts, in general, there's some kind of grid because you know you had to put it together. So use those seams as guides so that you don't have to do any marking of your blocks. So if you, this is perfect. I'll say, if you see where that little pink hexagon is with the pink circle in the center, it kind of joined them there. I thought, oh, and we need another one over here. So. Again, I'm easily amused, so it makes it a lot of fun <laughs> to amuse myself while, while I'm quilting. Another thing you can do with really small pieces is use the quilting to combine them. Just because I have a row of two different shades of green doesn't mean I can't use one design over both of them. This is really helpful if you're working with quilts with tiny blocks. Let's be honest, if you have teeny areas, it can be really difficult to fit a design that looks nice in there without becoming too fussy. So use the quilting to join them together and kind of pull them in that way. So I just thought, you know, here in those greens, I'll give it a nice overall texture. It'll pop against the echoing and this, the swirls that I've done and make it look really nice. And it's so fun going back and looking through pictures because I find all sorts of stuff. So I found this, this little gem, uh, me actually quilting the, that shape. So I know it's a little bouncy. I'm actually quilting and holding the phone. But you can see here, I'm just picking a design that uses that whole area. So don't be afraid to combine you know, um, blocks or use designs that cover more than one block. It, it's totally fine. Especially with those are so similar in color that I knew it would, look, it would look really pretty. All right, beyond that, look at it as an opportunity to experiment with a lot of different design ideas and variations. Because here's the thing, if I make a quilt with a bunch of these little blocks, if I quilt one and I don't like how it looks, no worries, I can switch it up to something else. So almost use it like a, a machine quilting self-challenge, right? How many different ways can I quilt this uh, grandmother's flower garden block? And I think you'll be surprised exactly how many you can. So in this particular arrangement, in the little flowers around the center bit there, I thought it'd be fun to connect some different points on those blocks to create those shapes. And you can kind of see I did some different stuff in three of them and some different things in others. But again, when you combine them or repeat them, that's when you get those secondary patterns. So if you're not sure if it's gonna look good, just take a moment and kind of trace it out on a piece of paper, see how it looks and, and go for it. Because here's the deal, if I had tried that in some of those outer blocks and didn't love it, I would have switched to something different in another area of the quilt. So don't be stressed out about that. Kind of along the same vein of combining your blocks when I looked at this, I saw the center, that little fussy cut little thing. It says, you're a winner. Love it. I was like, oh, I am a winner. Um, and then doing some geometric around the outside. But in that light pink, it reads to me, of course, like a ring. It's not fussy cut out of any particular fabric. It's all one solid fabric. So using echoing around some of the sides of those blocks allows me to join them together and just kind of emphasize the effect that she was going for there. And so little bitty echoing around the inner flower and the outer pink ring and then just doing some wishbone in there. So again, you can join your blocks or you can quilt them separate depending on the fabric that's being used. But another thing I like to point out is in the red ring, I did some serpentine lines. If you think about it, if I have a bunch of you know hexagons together, it's just an irregularly shaped border. And so any designs that will fill those irregular areas will be easy to use there. So wishbones and serpentine lines, a lot of fun, especially in those areas where I wanna add just a nice texture because the center of the block is the star, right? Her fussy cut, that pop of yellow, um, and then keeping the quilting more simple relatively in the outer rings. So again, using the return on your quilting investment to put that 
oomph where you want to show off the element and just keeping that nice texture in the rest. Now we actually have seen this block before when I did the continuous curve tips, so just disregard that part of it. But I like to show that when you're dealing with those irregular areas, there's so many different designs you can use. Um, outside of the center, that kind of light purplish gray, those are feathers and they're almost like motifs because at the sides, that's where the feathers extend from and then that little uh, diamond at the top. So any of those shapes that will fill those irregular areas and the more that you work with your quilting designs, the more you'll know what's gonna fit that area. So a cute little petals and feathers. And what makes this great, as an aside, is if you're, if you're wanting to try feathers, but you don't wanna commit to using it in a whole big area, and you're not sure how it's gonna turn out, doing it in one little bitty block, and the moving on is a great way to kinda dip your toes in a, into a new design without being stressed out about you know, how it's gonna turn out. Again, another example of her amazing fussy cutting. I mean, the stars are fussy cut, the circles are fussy cut, and of course the kitty's face is fussy cut. With those smaller blocks, I just left, the, I left it unquilted, especially the cat right there. I didn't want the um, quilting to overwhelm it, and I knew that even if I tried to trace around the eyes or quilt around the nose, it was gonna be really distracting. So just because you've pieced all that English paper piece quilt doesn't mean you have to quilt every block. So I try to be very intentional about what I do quilt and where I don't quilt. Now, so keeping the kitty face unquilted is gonna allow it to puff out a little bit more. But then if you look at the solid kind of lightish gray, there's a lot of pebbles right there. Well, I know that that's fine. It's not gonna overwhelm the fabric, but I didn't do the same thing in the cat because I didn't want to take away from her beautiful print. So again, just the fabric does play a role in the designs I'm picking and also that secondary effect that we're getting. And like any quilting that you do, you can choose how difficult or how, how complex you want it to be. It's like a choose your own quilting adventure. So in the center, again, this was a cute little block from her Zuma fabric collection, if I'm thinking that correctly. I used the dot to dot idea to create kind of that star shape. And then I thought, you know what, what the heck, let's throw some continuous curve on top of it. So when you're choosing your designs, using them repeatedly or even combining them can create some fun effects. And it's funny because I didn't really I mean, I remember quilting it, but I don't remember what I was thinking when I did this. But if you look in the little green hexagons, even using the quilting to create secondary patterns where they're joined together, those little diamond shapes and some continuous curve. I was looking through my pictures. And I was like, oh, that's cute. I did a cute job there. So it, it's kind of fun to go back and look at the pictures. Now, you don't have to use the boundaries you're given, right? If, I've, if I'm given a block, I don't have to just quilt each block. I can join blocks or create secondary designs. And if you look in the center, okay, we've seen that, some dot-to-dot -dot quilting. But if you look at the next ring with the circles, the fussy cut circle fabric, again, I just, it, I can't imagine taking the time to do all that. It's just pretty amazing. So quilting around the element in the fabric, the circle, because, hey, she fussy cut it. But using, quilting other little circles in between the big circles kind of combines them, makes a cute little pebble ring. But can you imagine another reason why I might have done that? Well, it allows me to move from one circle to the next. So if I quilt around the block or the print in the fabric and I add another circle to get me to the next one and then do that one, it's going to give me this cool effect, but it's also way more efficient than breaking thread on every single circle. So picking designs based on how they move you through a block. Usually with English paper piecing or any blocks that are pieced in a, an arrangement like that, I want designs that are going to help me move on and quilt the block. So it's just picking designs that are going to be nice and efficient. If you look in the teal row of hexagons above that, you'll see some dot-to-dot -dot quilting with some diagonal lines. So I quilted a line, added a wedge, added my next line. Why would I do that? Because it helps me move from one to the next. So I kind of look at my blocks first and decide how do I need to work my way around it? And then I pick those designs that are going to help me do that. So just a few more examples. Again, it doesn't have to be difficult and you can come up with different arrangements. If you look at the circle fabric, fussy cut around the outside, instead of going around each of the circles, I did some dot to dot geometric quilting that just kind of nestled that circle right in there. Gives me that same effect, but a slightly different look. And one thing I will point out, all these, these last few pictures are all from the same quilt. So I'm doing a lot of different things on the same quilt, but since they're the same basic shapes, it's not overwhelming it. It's just kind of repeating that, that design element. And if you look at the eyes, fussy cut in, the in that little ring, just quilting a very gentle line that just kind of goes around the outside. Again, I'm not trying to go around every little element of that eye because I know it's going to look not good and I know it's going to take too long. And then not being afraid to leave areas unquilted for that pop of, of, uh, of 
unquilted area. Now, I will tell you one question that kind of comes up from English paper piecing is since we have those seams put to the side, we put it on there, what about stitching in the ditch? Because if you think about it, there really isn't a ditch, it's just the two pieces. Um, I stitch in the ditch to move my way along the area, and I don't even worry if I'm hitting it perfectly in between those two pieces, because let's be honest, what are the chances I'm actually going to do that? But I'm also adding other quilting. I would be hesitant to take an English paper piece quilt and only stitch in the ditch and do nothing else, right? Because the only thing holding that quilting is like your, your thread, your little piecing. So if you're going to do light quilting on your English paper piece quilt, I would do something that crosses over your seams instead of just going only on them. Does that make sense? Um, but since I know I'm going to quilt the heck out of these quilts, I'd, I just use the stitching in the ditch to help move my way around the area and to continue on. So besides, that's the only time I would take that into account. Um, echoing, you know, echoing is your best quilting friend. When you have those arrangements that are a little unusual, especially around the outside of the quilts where they tend to get partial blocks, um, use straight lines. Here you can see in those white areas, it was a stripe fabric, I think. Yeah, so I just used quilting that kind of mimicked that. Um, dot to dot quilting, going around the area of the, the little diamonds, and then leaving the little sea otter unquilted. By the way, isn't that not the cutest little thing right there? It just makes me so happy to look at that. So now that you kind of see all those, you realize, wow, there really is a, uh, a method to the madness. Um, I'm going to switch back here real quick. So really, when it comes to working on your, your English paper piece quilts or quilts of any kind, don't be afraid to try some different um, arrangements. Don't be af afraid to try different designs. But really finding those things that you feel comfortable quilting in a lot of different ways will really help keep it from, you know, giving you decision fatigue where you kind of get where you can't decide how to quilt anything else. Well, Jessica, how'd that go over? Were there any questions? Maybe just a few. Now, don't forget, giveaway time. If you want to um, leave a comment on there, let me scoot that down leave a comment, you can maybe win some English paper piecing. And if you don't love it, then you can just give it away. Oh, so good. I answered the question before it even came through. In EPP usually has open seams. Do I stitch in the ditch? So again, I do because I like stitching in the ditch. It helps me move my way around an area, but I'd be really hesitant to do only stitch in the ditch on the English paper piece quilt. But let, again, let's be honest, we're not always going to hit that seam perfect, so it's fine. EPP projects sometimes have more bulk in the seams. Do I find that gives me problems with the corners and any suggestions besides dot to dot? Well, you don't like suggestions by dot to dot. Um, so yeah, there is some bulk in the seams and it depends on how much overlap you give when you're basting your, your uh, projects or how small the pieces are. I have teeny pieces on some of these blocks, well, I won't pull them out, where the fabric, okay, maybe I will, the fabric almost completely covers the whole thing. So there is a lot of bulk, especially right there. Um, so really, even though they're coming together with bulk, I really haven't had any issues with it um, because, they're, again, they're kind of pressed open. If you find that there is a lot of bulk in those areas, one thing you can do is avoid them. So instead of going and doing something custom like I've showed, you can do an all-over kind of design that helps you kind of meander your way around those bulky points. Now, this applies to any kind of quilt with a lot of bulk, foundation paper pieced or stars or anything with bulk, because here's the one thing I want to encourage you not to do. Let's say I have a star like this, and it's very bulky in the center. One tempting idea will be to kind of get up close to it, as close as you can, and then move on. But if I keep doing that, I'm going to get a nipple where it pokes out and it's unquilted, you know, quilted tight and then just pokes out there. So I'm going to just do something a lot less dense, something that doesn't come close to it relatively and try to kind of meander my way around it. Um, other times I kind of speed up the machine and try to jump over it like a ramp, like I'm on a car, like try to go. But sometimes that uh, does not end well. So I don't always, uh, don't always advise it. Any news on my new rulers in the next free motion challenge quilting along. Gosh, we haven't had any questions about this, have we, Jessica? Nothing about that. Oh my gosh, you guys, the rulers are not in stock yet. They're produced. If all things, they're waiting on paper. I don't, I don't know. They're waiting on paper for the inserts of the package. I have never been so ready for the launch of any project. I've got videos. I've got graphics. I've got product listings. It's all ready. I'm just waiting to get them. And I asked, hey, can I, can I just show them? Can I just talk about them? Because I have like two of each. Nope, can't do it yet. So I sent her an, a friendly little follow-up. Hey, just whenever you find out, just let me know. So we're just any, any minute now. And the next FMQ challenge is progressing beautifully. So I have the idea we're going to be doing the free motion fillers design library. 
and we're going to be quilting a bunch of different designs and um, we just got the test prints back and we're sent resent it out so that's coming together really really pretty quickly um, we're looking tentative don't hold me to it but we're looking about announcing um, in June so hopefully do I have a book or cheat sheet on quilting English paper piecing no and I thought man I should put together a PDF for this but since I didn't know until what yesterday that I'd be talking about this I haven't maybe if I have some time I will put together even just some pictures of what I've shown but um, some, from time to time for some of my live chats or some of my videos I put together either a free PDF or a PDF that's a nominal charge that kind of takes those tips so um, I don't know maybe I'll do that I need to work on my motif book right so uh, I did a live chat on motifs and I said I would make a book and I haven't done it yet anyway everyone here's the main point of this whole story whether your quilt top is English paper pieced or whether it is whatever it is, the idea is you can pick designs and you can make it as intricate or as easy as you want. Ultimately, the end of the day, when you're done with that quilt top and you've quilted it all, something magical happens when you throw it in the washer. You throw it in the washer, you throw it in the dryer, you pull it out, and it's no longer the fabric, the pattern, the thread, the quilting. It's now just the quilt. So no matter how you finish your quilt tops, just finish them because at the end of the day, you'll have a finished quilt and a finished quilt is always, always better than a perfect quilt top. Well, I'll climb down off of that soapbox, but you know what I'm saying, right? I hope everybody stays safe, has a great time. Don't forget to leave a comment to win the English paper piecing templates or check out the link in the description box. I have a link to everything I've kind of talked about as well as a starter pack for English paper piecing. And next week is still up in the air. If I'm at Missouri Star, I'm going to see if I can do a little live chat there. If I'm not, then we'll figure something else out. So I hope to see you next Thursday. Everybody stay safe and happy, happy quilting. Bye.